Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, 2020. What are my thoughts? Well, you guys are going to have to find out. Hi guys, it's WeFan360 here, and yes, I am back for another movie review video. So yes, I am back again with one of these videos. Uh, last time I gave you guys a movie review was on Toy Story 4. That movie came out in summer 2019 last year. And if you guys saw my review and heard from me personally, I really enjoyed Toy Story 4. I really loved it. I thought it was an enjoyable movie. It brought back my childhood because, of course, I grew up loving Toy Story as a kid. And um, I really loved it. It brought back my childhood. And uh, it definitely proved a lot of people wrong back in the day because before Toy Story 4 came out in theaters, a lot of people were criticizing about it, saying it's another cash grab, saying it's an unnecessary movie to the franchise. And I could, I could kind of see why now, like to this day, my minds have changed on the movie because the first three movies were such big successes because Toy Story 1 was a classic. It was the first computer anime film in Pixar and it was it was a big success back in the day in 1995. Um, and Toy Story 2 was the best sequel, no doubt. It was the best sequel out of all sequels we've gotten in Disney or Pixar. Either two, um, it was the best sequel, no doubt. And then Toy Story 3 had the better ending. And a lot of people have been questioning why Toy Story 4 is here. Why is it here? Why is it necessary? And as, as w when people saw it themselves, it proved a lot of people wrong. They did really enjoy the movie. They thought it was a really enjoyable movie. It brought back people's childhoods, all that stuff. And... Don't get me wrong, I did still see some reviews that still criticizes about the movie, saying it's another cash grab still. Um, and I watched Toy Story 4 like four or five times now, and as more as I watch it, I could kind of see why it's a cash grab. I could kind of see why it's unnecessary, um, because Toy Story 3 still had the perfect ending. And as I saw the ending in Toy Story 4, I don't think it can beat the ending of Toy Story 3, personally to me. So my mind has changed on the movie a little bit. I still think it's an enjoyable movie. I still I still enjoy it and I loved it. And it's Toy Story overall. I'll still love it no matter what. But compare the Toy Story 4 to, to the first three movies of the franchise, it just isn't that isn't the best compared to the other three. Um, if they made the story, like, if the story in Toy Story 4 was Toy Story 3, and then if the story in Toy Story 3 was Toy Story 4, then I can kind of, then that would make sense. That would make a lot more sense. That would make a better story, um, compared to the last two movies of the franchise. But, um, still, it just, I can still see why it's unnecessary, and I can see why it's a cash grab. But, like I said, I'll still enjoy it. I'll still love it no matter what. It, it, it was nominated as the best anime film this year. So I'm actually really happy, um, I'm really happy, uh, not this year, more of 2019, um, it was nominated for the Best Animated Film, um, and I'm so happy because it deserves it, because a lot of people have been criticizing about it so much, they get unnecessary and they get another cash grab, which I can kind of see why, but at the same time it deserves it, because, like, we waited so long for this movie, it should deserve that uh, award, so I'm proud for the creators and I'm proud for the movie, they deserved it and uh, so on and so forth, but putting that aside, I'll be reviewing another movie that recently came out, it came out on February 14th, I saw the movie on February 22nd, the review's just out late because, uh, of course, you guys heard of it, school, life, the whole scenario, you guys heard of it before, it's been distracting me from my channel, so once again, I apologize for that, definitely in March, I will have more time to do my videos, don't worry about it, March will be a brand new beginning uh, and it will be a brand new start for my channel returning again so don't worry um, my toy story my new toy story show will be out in March hopefully um, but hopefully that'll come out but if you guys don't believe me because I, I keep saying that I'll come back and I never did don't 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 trust my words don't trust my words at all but for sure in March I will come back I promise um, but yeah but today I'll be reviewing Sonic the Hedgehog, that movie came out on February 14th of 2020, which was Valentine's Day. Um, I, I have so much things to say about this movie. I have so much things to say. Um, I'll be doing a non-spoiler and a spoiler section uh, for the people who really wants to see Sonic the Hedgehog and just never got a chance to see it yet and doesn't want to get spoiled at all. The non-spoiler section is for you, but for the people who just never plans to see Sonic the Hedgehog or at least saw Sonic the Hedgehog in theaters, at least on the release date or probably before I made this review, the spoiler section is for you as well, so don't worry, this will all be equal for all viewers out there who wants to see this uh, video. And uh, 
Yeah, but before I start, I did bring Sonic and Eggman here with me today because I had to show something Sonic for you guys because I have nothing Sonic to wear, surprisingly, because I'm a Sonic fan. Uh, su uh, surprisingly, actually, fun fact, uh, I transferred myself from being a Mario fan to a Sonic fan a while ago uh, just because I feel like Sonic deserves the better attention it gets right now because Mario, just compare Mario to Sonic by the games and by their personalities. Sonic does have the better personality, has way more personality than Mario. And I feel like, I feel like with the Mario games, I feel like it's the same formula, you know what I'm saying? It's the same formula in every one of his games. Sonic's games are at least new, like there's a lot of new Sonic games, even the crappy ones if you want to include that, like Sonic 06, Shadow the Hedgehog, all the Sonic Boom games if you want to include that. Those games were not good, but they were at least something new. They were at least something new, and Sonic the Hedgehog definitely had newer games. It had a new formula, had a new, you know, had a new story to each of his games. Mario has the same formula, it has the same formula. It kind of gets old later on. I gotta be honest with you, but I I just feel like compare the personalities and the games. Sonic always brings something new to the table in the franchise, so I'm kind of happy that Sonic does that. And compared to Mario, he just he just does the same thing over and over again, and it's kind of annoying, and it kind of gets really boring later on. Um, but Sonic does have better personality, um, way more personality, and has more of a story in each of his games, um, and has new ideas. And I'm glad Sonic brings that. So I don't know why Sonic doesn't get that much attention, um, but overall, I feel like people need to give Sonic a chance, because Sonic needs the love it deserves right now. Um, because I just feel like Sonic does deserve attention. Definitely deserves it. That's why I transferred myself from being a Mario fan to a Sonic fan. Because it deserves the attention it gets right now. Um, but uh, yeah. So surprised I don't have anything Sonic on. That's why I had to bring up my plushes. Because they're something Sonic. Clearly. But uh, yeah. Um, enough said. I think I should get into the review now. So we're into the non-spoiler section. So for the people who never saw Sonic the Hedgehog and really wants to see it, you're safe for now. And then when I hit the spoiler section, I recommend you turn the video off and then see the movie and then come back and finish the video. Uh, to me, uh, personally, if you really don't want to get spoiled. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the non-story spoiler section, you're safe for now. So, alright, so I'm going to talk about the characters, the story, so on and so forth. Uh, just basically my thoughts on it. Um, so I'll be talking about the characters first, which clearly the first character, uh, the first actors I have, well, the two first actors that I have to talk about is Ben Schwartz and Jim Carrey, two of the stars in this movie, and I have to, I gotta say, they both do probably the best Sonic and Eggman voices, or best Sonic and Eggman character overall, I just feel like they do, do the better Sonic and Eggman than the Sonic and Eggman voices we've gotten in the past, um, and I just feel like, they just bring out Eggman and Sonic to life so perfectly well. So I'm going to be talking about Ben Schwartz first because they clearly he plays the star of the show, Sonic. And then I'll talk about the comedic actor himself, Jim Carrey. Um, so Ben Schwartz. Ben Schwartz is hands down the best Sonic voice that we have gotten in the past. Uh, he just he just brings out Sonic to life so perfectly well like he brought he brings his attitude down his personality down he got his cockiness down his emotion in the movie was really well done I really liked his emotion in the movie as well um he just does Sonic so perfectly well and definitely brings Sonic to life um and this movie does really show that this movie's more about Sonic than anything else more about Sonic because mostly every part well, if you include, well, this is more of an Eggman and Sonic origin story. This is, like, how is Eggman and Sonic became enemies and all on. That's basically their origin story. Um, and this movie's more about Sonic and Eggman. Mostly Sonic, because Sonic shows the most in this movie. And it does definitely show that this is more of a Sonic movie, not anything else. Um, so I, I'm really happy that Paramount decided to do this, because, first of all, First of all, I have to say that Paramount went from that crappy, disgusting Sonic design to this cute, adorable Sonic. And every time I see uh, the cute, adorable Sonic on screen, it makes me want to say aw so bad. It makes me want to hug Sonic because looking Sonic at the movie theaters right now, like seeing Sonic in the movie theater makes me want to give him a hug. Makes me want to give him a hug. He looks so fluffy and furry and I kind of like that. Um, but if I saw the original design of Sonic that that is so ugly... 
ugly and disgusting. I wouldn't want to give him a hug at all. <laughs> wouldn't want to give him a hug at all. I'm just glad that Paramount actually cared for the fans and decided to change to this cute, adorable Sonic because I wouldn't see the Sonic movie if they still stuck with the ugly design. Um, but I'm glad they changed that, um, changed the Sonic design to this cute, adorable Sonic. So yeah, just pointing that aside, I had to quickly mention that. But yeah, um, I'll talk more about the design at the end of the video. But uh, yeah, so Ben Schwartz overall plays a great, great Sonic. Hands down the best Sonic voice we've gotten. Um, he does play characters in the past like Dewey from DuckTales, like current day, present day DuckTales that we've gotten in, t uh, in Disney Channel. Um, Disney Channel right now to this day, uh, he plays Dewey from DuckTales, and, uh, he plays a bunch of other characters that I saw when I was a kid, um, but, uh, I adore Ben Schwartz, I feel like Ben Schwartz is a great voice actor, and he just does a great job bringing Sonic to life, so I give props to Ben Schwartz, uh, I adore him, he's one of my favorite actors, and, uh, yeah, so I have nothing to say about Ben Schwartz, I just feel like he's a ter terrific Sonic, and he does bring Sonic to life, it's really awesome and amazing. Now, on to the comedic actor himself, Jim Carrey. Um, I feel really bad I haven't seen much of his movies. I haven't seen much of his uh, movies. Like, I, ha I haven't seen, like, Dumb and Dumber. I haven't seen The Mask. I haven't seen Ace Adventure. I haven't seen any of those movies. I definitely saw The Grinch. I definitely did see The Grinch. I did see his movie of The Grinch. Um, and I probably saw another movie of his, but I forgot the name of it. Um, but I did see The Grinch for sure. I did see The Grinch because who hasn't seen The Grinch, if you know what I'm saying? I, ha I have seen The Grinch. Um, but I haven't seen the rest of his movies, so it makes me feel bad that I haven't known much information about Jim Carrey. But I heard that he's a terrific actor. He's like 50, I think 56 years old now. Um, so he's, he's at his middle age, uh, middle age range right now. But he still does bring Eggman to life as well. He does do really, a really good Eggman. I feel like he's the best Eggman we've gotten as well. So he, he definitely does bring Eggman to life. He he definitely stole the spotlight in this movie as well. He does. Because every time I see Eggman or Robotnik, he does call himself Robotnik in the movie. Um he doesn't get egg he doesn't get the Eggman name till later on in the film, probably towards the end the end yeah, the final act of the movie. So uh he is called Robotnik majority in the movie, um, because that's his basically his main title since the beginning. Um, but yeah, so Robotnik, he does bring Robotnik to life. Um, he does do a great Robotnik overall. He does do a really good Robotnik. Um, he definitely stole the show, like I said. He definitely, because every time I see Robotnik on screen, I laugh like throughout the whole freaking movie every time he's on screen. Uh, every time him and Agent Stone is on screen as well, it just makes me want to laugh so hard because I know something funny is going to go down because uh, every time Agent Stone and Dr. Robotnik are together in the movie it makes me want to laugh so freaking hard. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I feel like Jim Carrey definitely brings the character to life. Um, he, uh, I did hear that Jim Carrey actually likes Robotnik more than any of his roles that he's done in the past. Um, so I'm actually surprised, and um, I'm, I'm glad he really likes that role. Um, even though he didn't play m much Sonic games, um, he, he definitely knew the character very well. He definitely knew the character very well. He got his Im impressions down and all that stuff, and... All that's all that. So I have nothing much to say. It feel it makes me feel bad that I don't know much about Jim Carrey. I did hear a lot about Jim Carrey. Uh, uh, other other people told me about Jim Carrey, um, but it just I didn't know him much. So I apologize for that. But maybe in the future, or maybe later, maybe sooner than later, maybe I will get a chance to see his movies and I will give them a chance because I never got a chance to see his movies except for The Grinch and one other movie. But if if I give him Jim, Jim Carrey's movies a chance and I'll watch it later on. But I, I promise I will watch his movies. I promise. Um, but uh, yeah, so nothing much to say. Um, actually, Ben Schwartz and Jim Carrey are up to playing their roles again. They're up to playing Sonic and Eggman again. So if there's a sequel, we'll surprise, if we surprisingly get a sequel, then they're up to playing their characters again. Uh, surprisingly, Jim Carrey agreed to play Robotnik again because he's not a big sequel fan. He's not in with the money or anything like that. Uh, that's what I've heard. Um, but he surprisingly wants to play Robotnik again, which I'm really happy because I really want to see a sequel out of this movie um, and get a franchise out of Sonic the Hedgehog. So I'm actually really surprised. Um, so yeah, so they're up to playing their uh, characters again. So I'm hope hopefully if we get a sequel, if we get enough money in the box office, we'll get a sequel. And we get to see other characters like Tails and Knuckles and Shadow, hopefully. Uh, we'll get those characters again. But 
Uh, we'll see. We'll see how much the box office will afford for Sonic the Hedgehog. But, uh, yeah, so I did make notes here about the other actors and see what I thought of them because they don't get much screen time as much as Sonic and Eggman, even though Tom, which is voiced by James Marsden, I'm I'm pretty sure that's his name, um, was with Sonic majority of the movie, but he doesn't get much of, of the attention as Sonic, but I, I did have stuff to say about him as well. So James Marsden did play Tom in the movie as AKA Sonic's best friend. Um, James Marsden does it does really do a good job bringing out Tom, um, Tom and his personality a lot. Um, he, he, Tom is basically a watch, uh, a watchman, a uh, police officer in a way, like a watch officer. Uh, he looks after the roads, checking people's speed of their cars and all that stuff. Um, I feel like he does a great job. He, him and Sonic's friendship in the movie was such well done. It definitely developed their friendship a lot. Um... And uh, overall, he was a great uh, he was a great character. He was a great human a uh, human character to Sonic to the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, um, which, by the way, plays the best human freaking character out of every human we've gotten in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Like Elise in Sonic 06 was horrible, horrible, and then Chris from Sonic X was not as bad as Elise, but still was pretty annoying to me in Sonic X. Um, but Overall, Tom definitely plays the best human character out of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, out of the human characters that we've gotten. Because uh, Elise was horrible, and Chris was not not that bad, but was still annoying in Sonic X. So I just feel like Tom definitely, overall, hands down, plays the best human character in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, overall, to me at least. Um, but uh, overall, Tom was a great character in the movie. Um, James did a great job. Um bringing out Jane, uh, uh, God, excuse me, guys, it's, it's late at night, I'm tired, um, plays a good Tom in there, and Tom has a great personality in the movie, has a great heart, and overall was a great character to see in the movie, but, uh, yeah, so next we have Tika Sumter, God, I, I feel like I said that last name wrong, I'm pretty sure I got it right, or, just call her Tika, I'll call her Tika, um, hopefully, Tika, 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 it's Tika. Okay, Tika, she played Maddie in the movie, and um, she doesn't get much screen time, sadly. Uh, overall, what I saw from her so far in the movie was really good. I feel like she was a really sweet character. Um, she played uh, Maddie, which is a.k.a. Uh, Tom's wife. Uh, she she did a great job. I, I really enjoyed her character. I wish I could see her a little bit more. That's a small nitpick I have. I wish I could see Tika a little bit more in the film, see what she could really do with Maddie. Um, which I so like towards the final act she did play a, a good role for the rest of the film but we only saw her in the beginning of the um, a beginning of the beginning of the movie and towards the final act of the movie which I really wish I could see her more um, she she was a great she was a great add-on to the Sonic franchise but overall I didn't get to see much from her so I don't have much to say but she did a, she did do a good job as playing Maddie in the movie she was a great wife to Tom and yeah, overall she was a great she was a great um she was a great character. Uh next is Natasha Rothwell. Natasha Rothwell who played Maddie's sister in the movie. Don't much I uh, don't know much to say about her. She was a, she was honestly um Maddie's sister herself was kind of annoying to me. Um was kind of annoying to me, not going to lie. Um she was kind of annoying. Um she kind of grinded my gears a little bit just thinking that Tom isn't the perfect uh, like perfect husband to Maddie overall. Um, apparently, but, um, she, she was overall a good, kind of a good character, um, but, uh, yeah, overall she was just, she was, she was alright, she was alright, uh, Natasha did a great, she, great acting job, cl clearly, um, she, she did do well on Maddie's sister, and overall she was really good, and she was kind of annoying, but at the same time, I, I could kind of see why, I could kind of see why. Uh, so next is Lee, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the last name, I'll put the name right here, it's Lee something, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the last name, but, uh, Lee played Agent Stone in the movie, and, uh, overall, he, he did a good job playing Agent Stone, I wanted to see more from Agent Stone, he doesn't talk that much in the movie, but, uh, every time I see, like I said, every time I see Agent Stone and Robotnik together, something funny was going to go down, I knew it because they... In the trailer, we already saw something funny from them in the trailer, and it was really hilarious. Um, but overall, I feel like Lee does do a good job playing Agent Stone, and I wish I could see Agent... Like, like, with, like I said with Maddie, I wish I could see him a little bit more, what he can really do. But overall, he was just an assistant to Robotnik, 
and I just wish I could see him from, from like, see a little bit of his, like, character a little bit more, um, but, like I said, this is more of a, like I said, the creators did show that this is more of a Sonic and Robotnik movie than anything else, so I don't have much to say about the human characters, but Sonic and Eggman overall did do a phenomenal job in the movie, and definitely showed their origin story really well, and, um, yeah, so, I haven't, that's, that's basically the characters that I've known a little bit more than any of the side characters or anything like that. But those are the characters for sure. That was the cast, the main role cast. And overall, I feel like there was the, it was a great cast pick. I'm glad Ben Schwartz and Jim Carrey were the two main roles. They were just they were just fantastic picks. They're fantastic picks. They definitely brought Sonic and Eggman to life. Overall, it was a great casting pick. So, yeah, so on to the story. So the story was more of a tra- if you guys saw that really crappy movie, uh, Alvin the Chipmunks Road Chip or some other crappy chipmunk punk, um, that, it was kind of like that, but a hundred times way better. A hundred times way better. It's basically a travel, a travel movie, which I don't have any complaints with it at all. I don't. I feel like it was a great way to develop Tom and Sonic's friendship. Um, it, it was a great, it was a great development for- both of them and overall I feel like it was a great it was a great storyline it was a great storyline um and overall it was a great way to develop the friendship um but uh yeah um and the visual effects uh definitely from the final act the visual effects and the effects overall were really nice I like the lighting effect every time Sonic runs that blue lighting behind him it was really well done I really enjoyed that um that was really good um and every time Sonic runs, there's a bunch of lightning going behind him, and I feel like that was really good as well. Just the visual effects overall and the lighting effects was definitely really well done. I really liked that. Um, because it shows how really sick Sonic is. Really sick how Sonic is, how much of bad A Sonic is. Um, but I just feel, it just, it was really well done. I give Paramount kind of, like, I give Paramount props of just making the visual effects so well done. And lighting, lighting, visual effects. So well done and so great. Uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, but, uh, yeah, those are overall my thoughts on it. You guys can already tell, but I, I just really enjoyed the f movie itself. I just really enjoyed it. I loved it. I thought it was really well done. Um, Eggman and Sonic's interaction with each other was well done as well. I liked it. I wish I could see more. Uh, I will say one little tiny complaint I can have is that I wish I could see more of a Eggman and uh, like Robotnik, I should say. I can't. I'm so used to saying Eggman, guys. I apologize, but I gotta call him Robotnik. Robotnik and Sonic. I wish they could have a little bit more interaction with each other. Um, basically, I'm not gonna spoil much, but I I really wish that Sonic and Eggman did kind of get like. I kind of wish that they were interact with each other a little bit more. They didn't interact much together in the movie. Uh, not till the final act, which I, I can kind of get it. It's their origin story. It's how they become enemies. But I just really wish they had a little bit more interaction with each other. That's a small little nitpick I have. But overall, I still loved it. I still enjoyed it. Um, of course, it's a family-friendly movie. It's a kid's movie. So, of course, they're going to be, like, fart jokes and all that stuff. Freaking, um... I'm not going to spoil much, but there were fart jokes in there, and I'm not going to lie. It was kind of disgusting, but it, it's fine. It made me actually chuckle a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It did make me chuckle a little bit, but of course it's a kid's film, so of course there are going to be fart jokes and all that stuff, and I'm not going to tell you which part that was in because I don't want to spoil it, but uh, there was fart jokes in there, and I'm not going to lie. That was disgusting, but I did chuckle out of it a little bit, um, but um, yeah, so... I think I'm done talking here. I don't want to spoil too much because I'm already, I'm, I feel like I'm about to spit out some spoiling. So I'm going to get into the spoiler section so I don't have to spoil it enough for you guys. So here's the spoiler section. So people who really want to see Sonic and just never got a chance to and doesn't want to get spoiled at all, I'll give you guys three seconds to leave. Three, two, one. Spoiler section. Okay, so we start off with basically, well... First of all, we start off with Sonic kind of narrating what happened because we get kind of a flashback of what's going to happen later on in the film, which was Eggman and Sonic chasing down each other around Green Hill or I, I should say Las Vegas because that's actually when the final act was in. It was in, I think, Las Vegas. God, I, it's Las something. I think it was Las Vegas. I'm so sorry if I uh, pronounced the town wrong. If I was wrong, please correct me. I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to be wrong here. I hate being wrong, but I think it was Las Vegas. I'm pretty sure. 
or Los Angeles. Something around there, God, I, I'm going to call it Los Angeles. No, it's it can't be Los Angeles. I feel like it's Las Vegas. Guys, please correct me in the bottom. I forgot the town's name, but it was Lost something. Um, but it started off them chasing around each other. And then Sonic quickly paused the final act saying that this is how it happens. And then it goes all the way back when he was a little baby Sonic. Which baby Sonic, by the way, was freaking adorable. It was really adorable. It was so cute. It made me want to like say all like super loud in the movie theater i'm not gonna lie it was so cute and maybe wanted to give it a hug and all that stuff it, it it was so cute just imagine just imagine the crappy old design sonic being a baby that would have been so ugly if you guys know what i'm saying it, it would have been so ugly i'm not gonna lie like i said i'm so glad that paramount changed the design um but uh yeah so overall we saw sonic when he was a baby back in the day and then apparently we have a new character in town named Longclaw. Longclaw was basically Sonic's parent or guardian. Uh, basically his protector because we never knew what happened to Sonic's parents. We don't know what happened to Sonic's parents. Either they got killed or um, they were just they just left Sonic and never came back for him. Which would be very bad parenthood. Um, but we never knew what happened to Sonic's parents. So apparently Longclaw was basically Sonic's guardian. All that stuff, and then while they were having a little discussion and chatting and all that stuff, uh, they got chased down by a bunch of echidnas, which uh, I'm pretty sure at the time where Sonic was a baby, I'm pretty sure Knuckles, the echidna, was a baby as well. So I highly doubt that Knuckles was in the crowd, but um, overall they were chased down with a bunch of echidnas. All that stuff, Longclaw tried to take Sonic far away as possible. Uh, suddenly Longclaw will give Sonic these rings uh, that will transport him anywhere. Um, and then Longclaw told Sonic to leave and just leave her behind. So apparently Longclaw was left behind because she wanted to protect Sonic and all that stuff. Sonic was left Longclaw behind. And of course, this is a family-friendly uh, kids movie. So of course, we don't know if she she got killed by the Kinez or not. But I, I do have a prediction that maybe she was killed. I think she was killed. And it was sad. It made me want to cry already. because And it's the first, like, freaking five minutes in the movie or four or five minutes in the movie and I'm like I already want to cry because I think Longclaw did die during that part and we it, it never showed because it's, it's a kid's movie of course but I think she did die and it was kind of sad um but yeah so later on we saw later on we saw Tom which is the watch officer like I said he was he was looking around all that stuff. He he did say later on that his job is kind of boring. It kind of he didn't really say it, but I'm predicting that he thinks his job is really boring. He wants to do something more, um, and all that stuff. And Sonic has been watching over Tom and the rest of his family for like a while now, um, and he was stalking Tom while he was watching the roads and all that stuff. And he he kept speeding up, trying to mess with um. Uh, Tom's speedometer or something like that. I think it's called a speedometer or something like that, uh, which watches cars speed and all that stuff. Uh, he was kind of messing around there, and then suddenly Tom find a quill from Sonic's hair um, and all that stuff, saying, uh, thinking in his mind, like, what the heck is this overall? And then, yeah, suddenly we skip on seeing Sonic just speeding around Green Hills. The town's name is Green Hills, guys. That is such a smart idea. I do really love that idea of naming it Green Hills. Um, that was just such a smart idea to name the town. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it was a great idea. Um, and Sonic was just basically stalking a lot of human beings out there and all that stuff. Because he's too fast. No one can realize him and all that stuff. So, and he does little, you guys saw the trailer, right? He did have an area of his own home, uh, which, with a bunch of beanbags and comic books and him training about his speed and all that stuff. Um, and he was playing ping, bon uh, ping pong back and forth by himself. He was basically alone for, uh, for like towards till, he was a little bit of alone till he finds Tom. So he was alone majority, well not majority, but towards the beginning of the movie. Um, but, uh, majority of the beginning of the movie, but he was alone. He felt alone. He just wanted a, a family and friends. And then he basically been watching Tom, Maddie, and his dog and, all that stuff, basically that family for a while now, and all that stuff, and he was left alone while he was in the background watching the movie that Tom and Maddie was watching, um, that was, that made me want to be feeling so bad for Sonic, because he really does want us to be in a family, and it made me feel bad for him, and definitely, like I said, Ben Schwartz brings out Sonic's emotion so well done, it was so great, 
Um, it made me want to cry, made me want to feel bad for Sonic, because Sonic is alone. Because this was before Sonic knew any of his friends, like Tails, Knuckles, Shadow, um, all of his friends. That was be way before he saw any of his friends. Uh, before he saw Amy, too, so he didn't really have anybody. Um, so, yeah, so Sonic was watching them, majority of the uh, movie. And then, uh, going, for uh, going forward, he did see a bunch of kids playing baseball, and then later at night, he was going to play baseball by himself. Um, he, I did like the idea of him playing the different type of players in baseball, like the batter, the pitcher, uh, whatever that person is behind the batter that catches the ball every time the batter misses. I forgot the name of that player. I don't play baseball at all, and I, I don't think, I don't remember the last time I played baseball. Um, but I don't, I forgot the player, uh, the player behind the batter. Um, but I liked the idea he played different type of players in baseball. That was really fun, and that was really creative. I really liked that. And then suddenly Sonic hit a home run, and then he wanted someone to high-five him. He's, like, up high, and no one was able to high-five his hand. Um, and then he he started thinking, he started saying that he really is alone, and then he his emotions started kicking in, because ba based, on the, based on the story, his, his speed starts coming from his emotions, and I feel like that was also a really smart idea. So he started becoming really sad and angry. Um, so he started speeding around the field faster and faster, like lightning fast. Like it started going faster and faster. And then his eyes suddenly turned blue. And then he suddenly went really overboard. And he started powering off everything in Green Hills. Like the power went out, all that stuff. And yeah, so that that was a really big shocker. I, I was actually really surprised. Um, and I, I was like, whoa, Sonic really has that power, really does have that power. And then, uh, I think it was the, later on, I think the, I think it was the government or something like that. I'm, I'm gonna guess it's the government or, yeah, I'm gonna guess the government. Something like that. The government was discussing who made this power go out, all that stuff. Been questioning what happened to Green Hills. And then one of the men said, we have to call Robotnik. We have to call Robotnik, see if he can figure it out. And then the people were like, you can't call Robotnik. He's insane. He's crazy. And all that stuff. And they, uh, he was like, we have no choice. And so they called Robotnik. And then later on, um, Robotnik came in, and the entrance for Robotnik was sick. I really liked the entrance for Robotnik. Um, and Jim Carrey definitely brought out Robotnik. Like I said, he definitely does bring out Robotnik. And then he was just insulting this man in front of him, like, so bad. You guys saw the trailer. You know the man I was talking about. Uh, he insulted him so bad and all that stuff. And suddenly, Robotnik called his robots, told him to search around for Sonic and all that stuff. And we saw, a and they saw a bunch of Sonic the Hedgehog's footprints and all that stuff and then later on Sonic needs to rush out of here needs to get out of Green Hills so he grabbed his rings grabbed everything he can grab from his hands and then suddenly he he needs to go to uh, he decided to go to Mushroom Land which I don't know why there could have been way better places he could hide but he he decided to go to Mushroom Land so he collected everything he can carry told him to go to Mushroom Land he hid it into Tom's garage I believe and then Tom went out to search out for this person once again and then in his garage he grabbed his flashlight saying freeze and then you guys saw the classic meow and all that stuff and then they both started screaming um that brings back so much of the ugly sonic design guys I, i'll tell you guys right now